Hi and welcome to DCO. My name is David Copete. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to create this pattern. This is called the Kegom pattern. I don't even know if I'm saying that right, to be honest, but this is a pattern that you'll see commonly used. And this was actually a question that I've been getting of how do you create this pattern? And so I'll be going over all of the steps on a technique that I use to create this pattern on a surface, starting with the base geometry, then creating a polygon, and then using contours to create it. You can set this on any surface. So if you have a circle, let's go here to a circle and set planar surface and use this surface as the input. So set one surface here. We can override that and apply it to that surface. So you're not just tied to a rectangle. You can use this on any plane or surface, and we can change this from being this pattern to also just being a triangle. So thank you very much for being here. Hopefully you're excited to learn a little bit more about how parametric design works with Grasshopper. I appreciate you being here. And with all that being said, let's jump right into the tutorial. All right, so in this video, I'm going to be refreshing a few things that I've done in the past. This one's going to be creating the pattern of the Kagom design on a surface. So we'll start here by creating a rectangle. So let's go to a rectangle component. This is going to be a parametric base geometry that we'll be using here. So let's just create it using, let's say 250. 250 in the X, 250 in the Y, and I make a copy here by tapping Alt and moving the slider at the same time. So now that we have this rectangle, now we're going to be using that rectangle to create a surface. Now we'll go here to boundary surfaces, and that will create that surface around that rectangle. Now, what we need to do is to create the pattern, we need a location to start the base polygon that we're going to array. So what I'll do here is bring in the surface and now extract a reference plane in the middle of this surface. So the way that I like to do this is using evaluate surface. This will give me a surface that I can evaluate and I can extract the center point. Now here with the point, we need to insert a point location or U or B coordinate. The way I extract the exact center point is by bringing in a panel and then doing 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5. This will give us a 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. Now, this is going to be looking at this as 0.5 here and 0.5 here. But if we reparameterize the surface input, this will actually give us the 0.5 and 0.5 of this entire surface. So with this, now we can use this reference frame and use a polygon to create that geometry. So we'll use that frame into the plane input for the polygon. I'll zoom in here. And this is a hexagon. So let's actually change that here to segments. Now the segment is going to be of three. So we can just set an integer or bring in a slider of three. Now the reason why I don't like to create a slider for this one is because it's always going to be three. So for the most part, we can almost plug in the three or you can also internalize the data, which means that it will set that as three in, into the component. So we don't have to change that. And now the radius is the size of the pattern. So let's change that using a slider here. Let's go 4.5. Now I'll hide the reference plane. 
And this is the pattern that we're going to be arraying throughout the entire surface. Now what we need to do is, now that we have this geometry, we need to explode this polygon into its different segments. And since this component has all of those curves inside of it, we need to extract them using a list item. So now when you use the list item, it's going to select one of the objects from those segments, the index is of zero, but we can also zoom in and then go to the plus sign and know that it adds the next segment and then plus sign and it adds the next segment, which means that now we can use each of these outputs independently. So now we can hide this one and use these three curves to create the pattern. So what I'll do here is use a surface component and I will route this surface through this one because we want to be able to change that surface to any other surface. So independent of being a rectangle, we can actually set any surface here. And now that we have this surface, this is where we're going to be using the contour component. And we're going to be creating the contours on this surface. So the surface goes into the shape. The point is where it starts. So it's going to start at the center of this polygon, which is at this point location or at that frame. I like to use a frame here. The direction is going to be in this direction using the line segment as a vector. And the distance is going to be the length of the line segment. Notice that now it's creating the contours using this line segment and it's arraying them this way relative to this line segment and it's using that same length of this line segment as the spacing. So if we double click on this output where we have this line segment going into the direction and the distance, we can now do that again. So we'll bring this down here. And we'll do that again by copying this down. So slide it down, tap Alt, and doing the same thing to this next line segment. And doing that once again to the last line segment. So this polygon helps us create the overall size and overall direction of the contour. And it also controls the size of the pattern because it is created off of that shape. So this creates that triangulated pattern overall. But if we want to create the Kagom type of design, then what we need to do is take the point and move it halfway of the length of the segment. So we can use this as one pattern. I'll copy it down here and disable it just in case that's something that wants you want to use on its own. So we'll disable that. And then here we'll take the point. I'll double click on the input so that way we can create a relay and interject between the output of the relay and the input of the point, move the point in the same direction of the line segment. So the motion, we're actually using an amplitude component. So we'll use, oh, it's this one the vector of the line segment into the vector input. The amplitude is going to be half of the length. So we'll go to the length divided by two. 
This will give us a division component with B as two. And now we can use the output for this as the amplitude. And then move the point in that direction. So it moves it halfway. And what this does is it will offset the pattern halfway, creating a smaller triangle and a hexagon pattern. So this is how you can apply that pattern on any surface and change the size accordingly. So what I'll be doing now is showing you how to take this and apply it to an overall surface. Earlier on, I created a, a tutorial showing how to create a pavilion with a wavy surface and some um, toroidal columns. And so we'll be using this one and apply it to that surface. But for now, let's change some of the sliders here. So this is going to be the pattern size. And this is going to be the curves as the output. This is one. This is the other set. And you can also just use two of these if you like that pattern. And then here's this one. So the radius is really going to be the one that you want to change. And then here we'll use a, an empty surface component. This way we can use that over and over again with a different surface and set it here and then override this parametric surface. So now that we have this, let's hide the input for these so that we don't have overlapping wires. This helps keep the script clean and organized. And here we have the curve output. Okay, so now, oh, the other thing is we can set it so we can turn this on and off. So if this is divided by two, then we can do a one and two. So starting one dot, 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 two. So a slider that has one and two, and this will turn it on and off by doing this. We divide by one, keeps it the same. If we divide by two, it creates that pattern. So this is maybe a good slider to have it here on. And then we don't need to have this one because this one just creates the triangulated one. All right, so now let's move on to, like I said in a bit, let's, um, there we go. Let's apply this to a different surface. So let's go to this other script where we have the canopy and the columns here. The output is this. This join B rep. And so let's now take our script and copy it. So we'll control C, bring it over here, control V. And we'll use this as the input. So we have the columns and the surface. Now, I don't think this B rep will work as an input because it's a join B rep and then that's different than a surface. But if we use the columns as the input and then we use the top surface as the input, 
Now we can hide. We can delete this because that created the parametric surface. Hide this one. And now you're saying that that pattern is now applied on here. Now let's change the size of the polygon. And these are looked at as separate. So let's flatten the input. And this is what's happening. So it's actually better if we take, say, the overall surface from the beginning of the pattern or of the structure. And if you haven't seen this one, I posted this one. That was the last video I posted. If we use this as the input, and then we show the structure here. And now we can project these lines onto this B rep and we can now hide both the ground pattern and the ground surface. So you can see that now everything is sliding up here and we can change the overall size of this and it will be applied onto the surface. Now you don't want to go too small because it'll actually create too many line segments, but this is what I wanted to follow up on the last tutorial, which was applying a surface onto the canopy. And with this, you can see that it creates that pattern on it. So let's hide the structure here. And let's go back to well, the idea was to show you how to use the pattern. So that's what this is for. And now that we have this, we're going to use B rep edges. To get the edges of all of those B reps and create a pipe on both the interior and the naked outside curves. that creates that boundary on the outside. So what I've shown you here on this tutorial is first we went over how to create the pattern, which was starting with surface, extracting a point and creating a polygon. That polygon was then arrayed to create the pattern and the pattern we can turn on and off using this slider and so if you have any questions let me know in the comments below if you want to support my channel you can check out the links in my description consider becoming a member on my website i can, i have a large library of scripts that you can use that are ready to go and if you have any questions let me know in the comments so thank you very much for being here Hopefully you found this one useful and learned a few more tips and tricks on how to use Grasshopper. And with that being said, thank you and I hope to see you in the next video.